everybody to another show. Susan Winter here with you live today. And I do realize that there are some people who may not be with us today because of the time change. I am talking today about how to tell if someone is real or they are fake. And probably never in our time period have we had a harder uh, decision to make with all that we see around us. Increasingly, it is getting very hard to tell what is authentic from what is inauthentic. But I'm going to cover 10 points today that will help you, whether you are in your dating life, you're currently involved with an individual, in business, in friendships, straight across the board, because there are telltale signs that people have that are indicative of when they are inauthentic. Now I'm going to ask you all, Mary Jane, welcome, Phil, Nick, Pascal, Jyoti, thank you from India, fantastic, thank you so much, Anna from Montreal, I love all of you here, thank you so much, I appreciate this. I'm going to ask you to bear with me today if you hear any external noise, I'm doing my very best, but I have a painting crew here, oh, poor guys, I told them, silencio, por una hora, por favor, I've got a, I've got a, um, a painting crew across the street, they got a backhoe that's doing my neighbor's lawn, uh, completely redoing this, and I've got the Rotary Club picking all of my fruit on my orange and my grapefruit tree to help people in need, so I'm thrilled about that. Everybody's working here, and I'm working too. Real and inauthentic. You know, I've had a lot of discussions about how to tell a scammer online. And the dating games guide, those of you who are thinking about, do I need some extra tuning up? The link is here in the description. Dating games guide will take you to every single game that's being played and give you the counter move, give you the definition and tell you why they're playing it. People play games. People falsify because inherently they know or feel, believe personally that they're not enough. If they were to present to you who they really are, that that would be unacceptable. Now, you may be very open-minded. That may not be the case at all for you. But in their world, in their understanding, telling the truth and being real has at some point gotten them in trouble. Or there are those people that are just plain delusional. They would rather tell you their spin, their marketing spin, their branding that they want you to believe. And this is how social media has twisted the concept of real. I find for me right now, most offensive is Instagram. Now, it's a great place to show beautiful photos. I understand that. Instagram is not the problem the incentivization to have people show an incredible life that is just a little exaggerated is the problem. Again, it is never the technology. It's how people choose to utilize the technology that as the issue. Same is true with Facebook. It was originally just for people to chat with each other, but then they had to up the ante, the fabulous family, that this, and but, it, Instagram has taken it to a point that is so body altering, so image altering. You can't tell, is somebody really on that cruise? Is somebody really standing by the pyramids? Is somebody really by the ocean? Have they taken everybody else out? Did they just go for a day and get the photo op? Did they pay somebody to let them walk through a lobby? You don't know what's real anymore. So the impact to everyone else is to also falsify their life because, oh my goodness, how boring am I compared to this one? So we think that this is going to affect our worth and our value. True worth and true value are internal. And I promise you, when you can identify people who are real, truly real, there will be one consistent feeling you will get in your gut and your soul. You will feel at ease. You will feel relaxed. You will feel comfortable, truly comfortable with no weird stuff going on. Why? 
because the height of class, elegance, and sophistication is the ability to make you feel comfortable in their presence, and also because they have no internal conflict. There's nothing that's lying. There's nothing that's falsifying. They are what they are. Is it the shiniest package in the world? No. Buyer beware of any package that is so highly attractive. And I'm serious. This goes from marketing plans to any package you see. The more attention paid to the outside, the less content there is in the inside. And they do it on purpose. This is basic marketing. It's everything we hate. If you're in sales, you should be able to just breeze through what is real and not real, whether you're dating them or they play it out later. And remember, remember, people can keep this game up for a long time. They can keep it up for a year. We've got a lady here on, on this platform that I know and like very well who even married somebody, the greatest guy in the world. I finally found my one. Complete change. Now, let me tell you a part that you need to know and you need to remember. There is a small segment of the population that is truly unwell. And they know they are scammers without remorse. They are con artists. They are gigolos. They're sugar babies. They're whatever. And they're ruthless. It's transactional. It never was real to begin with. That is a smaller segment of the population. There is, unfortunately, between the real and not real, a group of individuals and this is frightening because I've encountered it, who don't know they're not real. They really don't know that they are not real. They have played the it looks like success game for so long that they don't know the difference. Their consciousness has not elevated to the point of integration and self-awareness and alignment. They're not self-actualized. They don't have the courage to really be who they are, really say what they mean, and really show up and stand behind their decisions. They will do what they think is good. Why, how do I know this? I had a friend who proved herself to be the same. Blew my mind. And it takes a while to see it. And I'm going to tell you the inconsistencies that prove it when you listen to the stories. So these 10 things I'm going to talk about will illuminate what is false. And I know it's a little bit of a mental twist, but understand there are some people who are false. They don't know it. They didn't intend to hurt you. They really don't know what they're doing. The idea looks good. They didn't know they didn't have a skill set. They thought they wanted it and they didn't. So I don't want you to walk away from hearing this conversation and think, wow, everybody's a scammer. Everybody's a narcissist. Everybody's transactional. Everybody's using me. Sometimes it's much simpler than that. You're dealing with somebody who may have great metaphysical language. They could have great psychological language. They could go to therapy. They can look functional and they're playing a role. Um, I was seeing a guy for a while that uh, told me point blank, and thank you, God, that whatever it is about me, people tell me the truth because one person speaks for thousands. It's not a one-off. Younger, of course. And he said, when I go to work, I play the great worker. When I'm with my family, I play devoted son, great brother. And in relationships, I just play the boyfriend role. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. And I was realizing that many people assume the costume of who they think they have to be. And if you doubt what I'm saying, you think, oh, that would never be me. Who were you in middle school when you were trying to find out who you were? Didn't you try to look to the clique to see where you fit in? And didn't you try to look to who you could parrot you know, we oftentimes look at these people. Why do people wear the same clothes? Do you remember in the 80s, people were dressing like Madonna? They're not Madonna. They're not. That, but they would dress like that. You dress like your eye. So you assume a personality of someone you think is important, someone you think is approved of, or somebody that you really like. There is a natural arc in our development as a human being where we will try on costumes of other people in order to find out who we are. And it is a matter of trial and error. But as in all evolution, personally and otherwise, 
we need to put on these layers to try the different personalities until the end the end realization is oh um now i have to disconnect from all these identities to be me so in the beginning there's the accumulation of what you think you should be and get this job and get this role and get this house and with self awareness comes the release from these things that are not true and real. So if you have any questions, put it in the super chat. I see everybody's here. Good morning. We've got Brian. We've got uh, King Cole. Comfort is what dictates a relationship is going to thrive. Yes. Wow. I've encountered so many. You're an empath. Okay. It's tough for empaths. I'm telling you. I think middle school is the time um, for it because you're still growing. Yeah. So understand. Uh, they can look and act like somebody that's highly aware and still be assuming the characteristics of what they think is real. And you will find the flaws. But remember, too, have a little bit of patience. Everybody is in their process, right? Everybody is doing the best they can with the information they have at the time. So number one. All right, here we go. Number one. When you're with somebody and you're dating them, okay, and this is the initial, or you're newly in a relationship, they don't remember important details about you. Somebody who's not real is or is false, a scammer, a con artist, whatever, they don't remember the details, okay? They act interested, but they don't remember really important information that you've shared, and that's because ultimately they want to win you. And the win of capturing you for whatever their end goals, even if it's just to have you, that's more important. And the stuff about you really is not that important. So what they're looking for is your respect, your approval, your admiration, your love, and possibly your resources. Right? You understand that? Okay. Uh, I'm... You ask me the questions. Gauri, ask me the questions on the breakup when I'm done with this exposition, if you don't mind. Happy to do that and put it in a super chat so I can find it. Okay, so you understand that? Have you ever been with somebody? Um, I remember having a fellow come into my home that I was seeing and took an inordinate amount of time to notice all the photographs of my family and myself and me as a child and ask questions. And I thought, wow, that was very interesting. Now, now that I've said it, it could be like all oh, the con artists are going, oh yeah, and that's something you're supposed to do. We, you know, I'm just saying in general, okay, this is how it works. Now, um, the other thing, point number two, they seek to gain your approval and flattery. This is sales. This is indicative of sales, okay? This is how this rolls. We know this. Anyone in sales, you know how it's important to be charming and to be chameleonic so that the person likes you. This is what's going on here, okay? So they'll be giving you excessive attention and flattery and impressing you. And remember, in a fake relationship, in a fake dating scenario, the desire is more to capture you than it is to maintain you, okay? Okay. And that's a little startling, but that's the way it works. Anybody have any questions on that? Oh, Cece says, I used different free photo check websites when I was on a dating app. I was surprised how many are fake. Oh, yeah. Um, so they must think I like older men because they'll always throw them in, <laughs> in my face here. And, and they'll say, older men in your area, mature, date mature men in your area, right? They have these models. Guys do not look like that. Okay, at that, they don't. I know that. They don't look like that. It's so amazing. What I'm telling you now also applies for online. So if you're strictly listening to this to get a read for somebody online, it's the same stuff. They don't really pay attention to things you've said that are important to you. Okay. And they don't, they're more intent upon getting your approval and flattering you to do so, to get you into the fold, to like them and approve of them or want them or whatever for their purpose, not for yours. 
Okay. Not for your benefit, but for their benefit to have you understand. Okay. I have the same question. What free photo verifying websites would you recommend? I don't do that. I don't know. Y'all talk to each other here. I wish I did. I do the Google reverse search and stuff like that, but I'm sure I don't do online, but I'm sure that for those of you who are, I have done it. I get on, I get off. Uh, I help you all because it's supposed. if you want to date and if you want to meet people, it is a great asset. It is the condiment. It's not the main course. Okay. But do it filter through filter, filter, filter. All right. I have the same question. Okay. He's got that. I do just use Google reverse flora. I do the same thing. Image search. Yep. That's the quickest and easiest. Okay. Number three. Now y'all know this futurizing. I don't think it's a word, but it's something I've been using for about six or seven years. They make false promises. They make promises well in advance of the chronological pace of the relationship. All right. Promises, future plans way in advance of where you are today. Much of this information is good for those of you to apply to somebody who is not an overt scammer, but somebody whose pace is too fast. You know it's going to burn out and you start to see these signs. And I know you don't want to see them. I know you like them. I know you were hoping this time, oh God, don't send me back onto online dating again. Please let this person be real. But this is something you have to watch out for. When somebody jumps ahead of themselves in making promises and plans for the future, they're daydreaming. You think they're real because you're real. They're daydreaming. So unless it's in order of where you are progressing in your relationship, that's a red flag. Got it? Okay. Number four. All right. They seek to attract rather than build, rather than build some real connection with you. So most of your interactions are going to be them buttering you up. So this is a lot like players. It's all the same category. We're talking about false as opposed to true connection, real people who are interested in who you are, who remember what you said because you are important to them, who pay attention to you and compliment you, but also are there with you, listening, learning, and caring about you. And when they say something, it's in a shorter time frame. It's like, would you like to go out next week? What are you doing? And they'll, they'll say it two, three weeks away. They're not like, Okay. And they'll say, I'd like to take you to this wedding or how do you feel about, but it's, it just feels like the timing is right. Okay. <laughs> I kind of like this trigger me Elmo. That's a cute little name. Uh, okay. So that's where they seek. So remember false people, players, they put all of their attention on phase one, att uh, attraction and capture, right? After that, the game is over. This is why so many of you will write, I can't understand what happened. I had these dates. They were wonderful. Then they started to backpedal. What is going on? Right? That's what's going on. Welcome, Linus, and welcome, Pablo, Brian Pablo, again. Okay. Five, oversharing and undersharing. Okay, it can cut both ways. Now, oversharing, uh, where, let me go back to sound bites. So part and parcel of this concept of over and under sharing, each one has its own merit for them and their purpose if they're false. If they're oversharing, it's to try to build a connection with you to prove that they're real. Oh, this is me. Uh -huh. So you think, oh my gosh, they're so vulnerable. They're so revealing. But it's more than you needed to know in a time period that's way advanced, again, out of chronological order for where you are in the relationship. So it feels a little like, I don't know if I should be knowing this now. Oftentimes that's a game, all right? The sound bites that you hear from a false person are definitely rehearsed. They have said these things, these comments so many times 
that the undersharing part is when you get to questions like uh, what happened in your last relationship, you're going to hear a, a bullet phrase. And if you ask again at another later time for more details, they're going to basically repeat that and not enhance it because that's their, that's their story. And so oversharing the bio and the part of who they are and, oh my God, I worked with this person and the name dropping, all of that is to win your affection and your approval. The undershare, they're not transparent and they're not open. They give you sketchy details when you're getting personal. And that's where you can trip them up in the stories. Listen carefully to what they tell you. Remember the stories. I finally had to admit quite unfortunately, that a woman that was a friend of mine that I cared for very, very much, I discovered that all of her stories about the jobs that she'd done and who she'd worked for and things like that, they were wrong, including how she got her money. And it's only because I heard her tell me the stories and then I heard her tell the same story in front of other people. And then each time the story would change and have a vastly different outcome. I never knew the exact town where she grew up. She never would tell people. I never knew much about her childhood. Vague, very vague. So when she came to America, she got to be who she wanted to be. There is a fake it till you make it um, philosophy. But in relationship building, this is not where you fake it to make it, right? When you're trying to make a connection with another human being, you do not want to be faking it. You want to be honest and telling the truth in order to create a foundation that is healthy. So if somebody is trying too hard to impress you, name dropping, doing too much, or just really vague about a lot of things, even upon questioning, they clam up or they find very creative ways to shut you down, right? This is not. This is this is a sign to watch out for. Number four, telltale sign of any poser. They're hyper aware and preoccupied with status. Status, all the symbols, the outward symbols of status. Because remember, their life and what they're telling you is a costume. And they need the right backdrop to impress you and keep this game up. Yeah? They need the right costumes, so they need the money, they need the locations, they need to... Now, half of these locations they go to, like the clubs, the private clubs in New York, you'll notice they are not a member. They're the ones taking all the photos for the fact that they're there. You know, it's a funny thing. When people go on a cruise that have money, they're not taking tons of photos for their friends. They're living in the moment. When people are riding business class with the, you know, collapsible seats, the bed seats, they're not taking photographs to impress you. Sometimes they will. Sometimes, you know, just like to show, okay, this is what I've achieved. I get it. I do get it. But it's a brag, slightly humble brag. Um, I'm always tempted to do things like that. I just came off a 14-day cruise through um, the South China Sea and through Asia. I didn't take one photograph of myself on that cruise ship. I didn't take a photo of my room. Um, I was actually busy. I have one photo that I'm going to share on social media of a man who was newly widowed. And so all the gals and I got around him to kind of give a little provocative hug. And, you know, we wanted him to have something to talk about when he went back home to his guy friends. And he was a heck of a nice guy. He was a great guy. So that was fun for all of us. But remember, if it's real, if you jump in a jet, your own jet all the time, you're not taking pictures of it because this is your normal life. The people who highlight these things, be aware of it because they don't really have it. They are looking to aspire to it and they are looking to connect with people who have and they are looking to utilize those people to elevate their social position. It is not about the individual. It's not about the guy that owns the plane. It's not about the lady who's got the private club membership. They couldn't care less about that. It is about their ego, their status, their position, so they look better to the world. We don't want those people. Got it? Okay. Any questions so far on anything that I've said? Write me a question if you have one. Okay. Nobody's got any questions. 
All right, on to the next. Here we go. Okay, so we talked about being hyper aware, right? Now, let's go into the career and the accomplishments. You are going to notice inconsistencies in this. Their career, their accomplishments are not, it's just going to seem like not right. This is again where you have to keep track. I knew a lady who um, was an, uh, kind of a, uh, an associate, right? Who always put Harvard under her name. And because she had a degree as a therapist, you know, was licensed in a master's degree, uh, people assumed she went to Harvard. We all assumed it. And when we said, oh, wow, you graduated from Harvard, there was never a denial of that fact. And it came to be that she'd never gone to Harvard. Never, ever. It had nothing to do. It was aligned with some project in some school, some little group that had an alliance with Harvard. So we tend to believe what people spin out. And honestly, if you are from, I don't know, let's say you're from Canada or Minnesota, or you aren't a liar yourself, you're not a liar. It's going to be very hard for you to recognize people who falsify because you don't do it. This is the cool thing. It's like nobody knows if you're not a drug addict, you don't know what drug addicts are like. But if you are a drug addict or have been one, you know exactly what they're doing. Got it? Okay. Somebody send me an emoji or something so that I know I'm still live with all of you because I haven't seen any response. Can you do me that, that favor? Who knows if, so oh, good. You're still with me, Flora. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, with all that I've got going on here, I don't know if they've done something with the internet or what's going on. So thank you, Flora. I appreciate that. Okay. Now on to the next Number eight, ask specific questions. A person who really lived something has the answer. And the answer is never going to be exactly the same. It'll be more detailed in different areas, but it'll still ring true to you. Thank you, Flora. Thank you. Thank you. I know I've come at a time that for most of my Europeans who are here at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so you're here at night, probably don't know that we're on today. All right, so thank you. So don't be afraid when you're meeting somebody to ask questions and listen carefully to what they say. And then at a later time, ask the same a variance of the same question and see what answers you get. Lori and Nick, thank you for this. I know you're with me. Okay, so this is how you tell. A player, a liar, a person who is disingenuous will have sketchy details or memorized script bullet point phrases that they say every time. Not much more. Remember, for a liar, it's difficult. The more you elaborate, the more you can get in trouble. But oftentimes, novice liars one of the ways you can tell a novice liar is that they go into incredible detail because they're desperately trying to convince you. That's kind of a novice. I've met players like that, that stories took 10 minutes. Oh my God, their phone, why they didn't contact me. Their phone was stolen. Then they broke into the van. Then they lost all their information. Then they couldn't use a phone. Then they didn't know. And this was funny because I, when I had the learning curve of trying to date players so that I had information for women that were out there and people that were out there with players of all genders, I didn't know anything about this except they just kept going on and on and on and on. So in my case in particular, if somebody tells me they don't know how to get a hold of me, you call the publisher of my book. You go online to susanwinter.net. You go to any social media. I mean, like what? You go to the gym where you met me. You stop at the front desk where you left me the flowers and leave me a note, right? Easy. <laughs> okay. So the fakes have inconsistencies in their stories and they will reveal themselves in either telling a different story altogether than the one you remember, completely different, or they will omit again because they don't have the answers. Okay. Number nine, a faker is chameleonic because remember they don't have a true center. 
they are putting on the costume of what they think is socially acceptable for the role they are intending to play with you. Some maliciously, others unconsciously just don't know about life yet. Don't know who they are yet. Doing their best, don't know who they are. And others that kind of know, no, nah, I don't want a relationship. But if I put it in my profile, hmm, I'll get a lot more people responding, right? So you can tell because they take on a completely different persona with different people. So if you are able to isolate this person that you are trying to figure out if they're real, again, whether it's a coworker, a friend, a family member, somebody that you've newly met, somebody you're dating, if you're able to isolate them for a while and get to know them and hear their stories and then integrate them into a crowd, see how dramatically their personality changes to appeal to those around them. That's a person without a center point. Like if for you, you are a raging liberal, like you're like, and they're all on board with that. And then you hear them meet a super conservative that's talking completely different ideology. And they're like, yeah, man, that's right. So what do they really stand for? You see, being truthful, <laughs> being honest, being open, and being truthful means that you will gain the respect and admiration of those that agree with whatever you're doing and saying. Being untruthful means that you will gain the respect of those around you who believe you, right? So, uh, you know, you will also, if you're truthful, you will gain just as much, how do I say, disapproval from those who don't think, do, act as you do. So you lay yourself open to judgment. So if we pick a role that is chameleonic and appropriate for the outside world at all times, it's current PG at all times, and that's what we adopt to stay without any controversy. We are ultimately at some point doing ourselves a disservice because we're no longer in charge of independent thinking. And we have reduced ourselves to just another repeat of everybody else. And it's my belief that everybody here on this channel and people who come into this life would like to live an original life that's true for them. And part of this is the undoing of the socialization around us to be able to do an a la carte life. And for those of you that want to do a la carte, please check out my individual package and listen to all of the a la carte information I have here. Meaning simply, I like this, I don't like this. This works for me, this I would alter. That kind of independent thinking instead of taking the whole thing and going, I'm, I'm this, shows that you have made a conscious decision about how you want to participate in this life, right? So this is what the goal is. It's not to strip you of everything you believe. It's not to take away your infrastructure. It is to simply have you ask. I remember uh, uh, my, young, my young boyfriend, when I first met him, he came, something came flying out of his mouth. It was like, it didn't even sound like him. And I said, who said that? Who, 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 who's, who's saying these words? Because I don't even know who this person is. He said, oh, I, I guess my dad says that. I said, well, that's cool. Why don't you think about whether you agree with that? I'm not opposed to it. Just if you say it, own it. And if you don't agree with all of it, amend it. And if you agree with none of it, then be clear. But don't just take it and slap it on. You're never going to feel comfortable in somebody else's costume. All right. And the last thing, well, this is, I actually went into this. Do they have true beliefs or popular beliefs? That's a social slave. Popular beliefs mean you don't have a center point. All right. There are fake people who don't know how, what they don't know and what they do is play the persona that they want you to have them be. Um, and they play the role that society wants you to be. Again, an individual thinker will have just as many detractors as people that approve and applaud. 
So that's my rant for today. I'm open for super chat. If you have questions on what's going on with the people you are dating, it can be on this topic. It can be on another topic. Does anybody have a question for me? So if you don't have any questions, I completely understand. If you have no questions for me, then I can end early if you don't have any other questions. But what I can tell you is take a look at the dating games guide if you are in any way confused about what's going on in a relationship. I understand that many of you are naive in the sense that if you don't do something, it's hard to imagine somebody that does. And here, for example, would be a case if I can't imagine beating a dog. I, I can't even imagine putting dogs in a ring to fight to death. And people do that for sport. It's disgusting. Well, we used to do it with humans, gladiators. But I mean, there are parts of human nature that are so repulsive to me. Um, and I don't understand that desire. So it would be very hard for me to recognize something that I don't do and I haven't seen. So for the completely naive and innocent, and I have worked with people like this, and they're adults, and they're complete innocents. They're 100% truthful and honest, and they are who they are, and they don't falsify anything. So let's see, Susan, where can I send you flowers? <laughs> My doorman in Manhattan when I get back there. Gwyneth, hi, honey. I was pretty sure that you didn't know about the time change, and I thought about it just as I was logging on today. Does anybody have any questions before we... Because this is your time. I'm here to answer your questions, okay? So send it in a super chat or write me a question. Somebody had something about a breakup. <laughs> I can hear them working on my roof. Welcome, Gwyneth. How are you doing, everybody? Okay, if I want to talk to you, but if you, okay. Hi, Gwyneth, we didn't know about the time change. I realized that. Oh, Susan, I wobble. Thank you. And Nika. Nika, where's Nika? She's, she's hiding. Nika has had quite a lot of business to do. Um, she has been defending the house against all these people. <laughs> You could break glass with that little voice. Um, let's see. Okay, question. Here we go. Hey, Phil, how are you doing? How and when to tell them we know their game? Hmm. Uh, pretty much on the way out. Because by the time you say that, unless you think this is a major wake-up call for them, kind of like having an intervention with an alcoholic, you're not going to get a response. You could call it out as soon as you see it if you're absolutely certain. You could put them in the hot seat, Phil, say, listen, this is what I've observed that makes me uncomfortable and really makes me doubt, you know, whether you're telling me the truth. I need open and honest to build a relationship or even to keep continuing somebody. Otherwise, it's not worth it. You said this, da, 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 you did this. You did, da, 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 you did this. These inconsistencies occur. So what's up with that? Oh, well, well, I didn't know. I'm scared. And I don't know. It's a first relationship. Don't buy that nonsense. Everybody's going to go there. Oh, you misunderstood. I didn't mean it like that. That's, that's a professional liar. So how they respond to you depends on what you have the ability to do with next. But again, your explanation, don't think it's going to be a massive wake up spiritual. Oh my God, you're right. I didn't know I've been fake my whole life. Oh, thank you for telling me, Phil. No, they're going to lie and blame you, do the turnaround if they're a player, or they are going to say like, d default to like, oh, I didn't know I'm innocent. I'm a victim. I don't know. I didn't know. Did I say that? I'm so scared. I was so hurt. Don't buy either one. Right? Okay. Um, Bianca says, listening to what you said, I'm definitely dealing with this type of person. What's the, ba -ba 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 -ba? what's the, hang on. What's the best way to back out of this relationship? Just like Phil, just leave quietly, quietly or let them know that I know. Well, you're going to have to give an exit strategy to, for their closure. You're going to have to tell them why. And I would tell them, this is what I don't approve of. 
This is, this is really uncomfortable. So you set the bar at, I need honesty. I need real info. And I feel that consciously or unconsciously, you're not being straight with me. Now, you have to decide, uh, Bianca and everybody else, are they a player? Because at that point, the gloves are off. You can do and say what you want to do because they deserve a spanking. And weirdly, every player I've spanked, <laughs> I don't know whether they have a thing for it, but they respect you more for saying it because you're like, look, at, I know you're a player. This is, you did this, this, and this. Really? Like, do you really think that's going to work? I, does that work? How many people does that work on? So you call them out. I used to do it with a sense of humor. Or I used to reprimand them for being a bad boy. I'm like, what are you doing? Don't do that shit with me. Don't do it. Don't even start it. Don't do it with anybody. You want to be respected in the world? Don't do that. Everything is everything. What you do, what you do. This is who you are. This is not a separate game, okay? Screwing people over in your romantic life is not separate from who you are as an individual. It's all you. If you can do it there, you can do it someplace else. So you can spank the heck out of them if they're if you think it's conscious. If they're unconscious, you could say, this is what I need. I don't know that you're capable of it. And if you are at the point that you really want to leave, Bianca, you just say, I know you're not capable of it. I would just suggest in the future, if you'd like to date somebody, figure out who you are. Stand by it. Because you're not. You don't know who you are. And I don't deal with people who don't know who they are. You just, but you've got to tell them why you're leaving. It's fair. Don't ghost them. And, and you know what? The fact that you have to ask this question means it's a challenge for you. I know it's difficult. None of us want to be controversial. I can't. I, you will never hear me talk about politics. Ever, 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 ever on any social media site. For me, there is no party that represents me. Each, for one thing I like, there's two things I hate with somebody else. I mean, there's just like, I wish I could just pick and choose. I like this, 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 my a la carte, you know, political party. And there is no institution of religion. I, I, I'm afraid of group thought altogether. I'll just be very honest. I'm afraid of groups. I'm afraid of group thought. I, th the minute I get into one of these things, I'm like, oh, you're telling me what to do. You're trying to keep me up late and have me dig into stuff in my past to break me down. So I think, you know, this is a tactic. I've had therapists who will tell me I can make them cry in 20 minutes. And they're good. They took me into a session and made me cry. And they were a friend because they know where to push the pain. So when you cry or you have a breakdown in one of these groups, you think, oh, my God, we're getting to the court. They're just messing with you. They're messing with you. That's You don't have to torture the hell out of somebody to get them to advance. You don't. B, let's see, what does she say? Oh, now everybody's here. Ever again, we didn't notice the time change. It's okay. Arizona never changes. I love this about Arizona. Actually, the more time I'm here, the more I really love this state. I come to hide. I do not come to socialize. I do not come to play. I don't know my neighbors. Again, I know them, but I don't know. I come here to just, because when I'm in New York and I'm traveling the world, it's like, and it's exhausting. So I come here to hide. I tell my neighbors, um, Explain to people this person's not homeless. I go around with my sweatshirt on that says, you're so big and strong. Oh, my God, the hooded sweatshirt. Oh, I love it. I got a medium. I think a medium. I don't know which one it is. It men's or what? I love it. It's so comfy. It's got pockets. I wear that. I wear baggy pants. It's phenomenal. Okay. Uh, Flora, I've done that, and they shut down. Well, yeah. Yeah, because you're calling them out. <laughs> they shut down because there's nothing to say. What's their next line? How are they going to defend what just happened? What do you think is attributed to so much distrust in dating in the last 15 years or so? Oh, man, is this another hour? Don't even get me started. Um, someplace around 2000, people decided that being themselves was boring. And pickup artists... Uh, found a way to get some game. On the good side, they taught nerdy guys who had socially awkward involvements, 
and fake love affairs with people they had crushes on for years. They helped some of these guys find a technology to at least talk to a woman. On the dark side and the downside, the manipulation was not only material. I mean, it was $1,500 an hour for some of these guys. The boot camps were a fortune. And it was all about getting laid. It was never about creating a relationship. And re again, remember, one of the original members was a man I worked with intimately on the psychological aspects of women not knowing what I was doing. So I had an inside track. The original guy in the game, one of the original house members. So this is why I know. Now, conversation starters are good, but what happened is, let's look at the arc. The guys come in with game, kind of new in the 2000s, kind of new to the dating market, right? Because we came from the rules. So now it's kind of new at the same time that millennials are disconnecting relationships from sex and creating hookups. What a perfect storm. Women are being encouraged to hook up. Men are being encouraged to hook up because it goes both ways. It goes for my gay guys. It goes for the straight women. It goes for lesbian women. All of them are encouraged to be far freer and pick much more quickly. And in doing so, there's not a lot of time to assess what's going on. And you're told that you're cool and you're modern. And if you want to do that, that's fine. I do not want any women to not be sex positive. I want them to feel that they can do whatever they want. This is not about that but it's about what happens up here when you have no safety net. So now guys are playing a game, lying, false, to engage women, not in a relationship, in sex. And then they're done. Five years into that, late, like I'm going to say 2007, 2008 to 2015, women are getting smart. They're like, oh, damn. I know what this is. Now they know the words. Now they know the tricks. Now they can see the guys on YouTube. They're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use him. He's using me. I'm going to use him. What do we have today? Have you looked at Instagram? How to manipulate any man? Have you seen that? How to use your feminine power to manipulate any man? Money, flowers, the condo of your dream. You should be riding in a Bentley. He's handing you tons of cash. These are marketing strategies by some people that are very clever. And maybe, maybe there are a couple things about boundaries or self-esteem in there, but they're selling these packages to buy into a wounded ego that this is it. So now the women aren't honest. Now the women are transactional. Now the guys are like, oh my God, where do I find a good woman? And we're in a hookup scene and everybody's impressed by social media that social media, you have to understand concurrently, has let us be our own PR agency. Oh my God. Are you kidding? It's like letting your children drive your Ferrari. It's it. You get to say, do be anything. So, and all of media and marketing, it's all kind of converged to gain our attention. So, oh Lord. So this is what's attributed to the distrust. Now we know that things are fake. Now we're wondering what's real, you know, is, uh, Princess Kate in the hospital, is she ever going to come out? Who just goes away for four months and nobody ever sees it? Like, this is, who, like, uh, I mean, everything. What do we read? Who is there? Who's talking? How do we know about the background? You've erased all the people. You were in Brighton Beach, but now you put Cannes and Monaco behind you. I mean, who knows? You alter your body, you alter your face. I, I, I don't know. So in a time period, that the millennials were screaming for authenticity, we have the most duplicitous and inauthentic people. And if that is the standard of success, then the impulse for everybody witnessing this is to, oh, 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 I, I look like this. So let's take body image. I grew up and it was Marilyn Monroe. People like me were in style. One day I go to school and Twiggy's in style. And for the next 30 years, I hate my body because I'm not genetically a beanpole. I'm not. I'm not built like that. Never will be built like that. Right? 30 years, I'm not in style. Then you have gals that are a little more healthy. Then you have fitness gals that, okay, I can achieve that. Now, if you don't look like this <laughs> and you got a whole nother zip code behind you, you're not in fashion. The hell? Those gals wouldn't leave their house in the 70s. So 
Who are we paying attention to? Why are we watching the movement and the trends? It is in our face all the time. It has never been more challenging for us to find our way in truth. The job of each individual is to think independently in your evolution. What do I like? What is real? What feels good? What is my truth? How do I want to live in a relationship? How do I want to craft a relationship? What are the important values to me? Who have I decided to be in this life? That I am at peace with it. I'm going to hold on to it. I am who I am. This is what I stand for because this is the person I am proud that I've become. That's what we're going for, right? Let me see. <laughs> I just want to thank you, Susan. I used to eat your brain in these live streams and videos after my breakup. You literally opened my mind to never play games of no contact revenge and just move on and live well. Let life slap them with karma. I have to tell you, speak your truth. Let them know why. At least the most positive thing you can do with somebody that has done you wrong is actually to call them out because when they lose somebody like you, they may not see it now, but they will really look at you later and go, damn. When you call them out and say, this is what it is for me. And I, I was really hoping you would have been, you know, whoever they said they were honest living in integrity. I so, so, so respected that. And that's the kind of person I want. And it saddens me so that that was not the truth for you. Listen, I wish you well, but I'm not doing this. You know, that's their journey. So, okay. I want to be prettier. Could you tell us about self-love? Oh, Max, come on. Um, you know, what's funny about me? So I'm older. You might notice, I, I, you know, I'm not going to pop open an iPhone. I look like a distorted creature. And I try my best with lighting. I know that this is a mediagenic field. I mean, I am affected by the age because I kind of hit my peak at the same time I got my Medicare card. So, like, what am I supposed to do about this? Um, looks affect all of us. I was going to do a different topic today about the power of mental chemistry and attraction and how you show up can really transform how you look to people. You all have remembered that story of me being with a supermodel in the backseat of a BMW in the mid eighties. Um, my boyfriend and his client, my boyfriend was a pro bodybuilder. His client was a guy that was getting in shape, um, a trust fund kid like insanely rich and cool as hell. But he had a lot of women. This this wife thing in the back seat was just one. And she looked like um Azaldina Laya. She looked like those, you know, the Robert Palmer simply just real thin, blonde hair. Uh, it was the look of the time. And I had to sit in the back seat with this woman for an hour and a half. My God, I thought I was gonna die. I used to be an interviewer, right? I tried every question I could. I asked her about her life. I asked her about her family. And it wasn't that she was trying to be closed down. It just, the well was a little shallow, pretty, but shallow. She hadn't developed herself. And I. she wasn't a mean person. She was beautiful. Nobody ever asked her to develop herself. It didn't seem necessary. She got what she wanted without. And, and again, I don't hate her for that. I'm just thinking, ah, now she'd be like, what, 60? Man, this is why develop yourself now. The best thing about beauty and being pretty is who you are on the inside and how you show up in the world affects so much of how people perceive you to be. Now. Yeah? Okay, I very much agree. And I think dating shows and reality TV played a role as well. Oh my God in heaven, you're not kidding. After 45 years or more, you figure this out. <laughs> I say it's okay to be the way I am. 
This is not necessarily a young person's game, but what's cool is that we can share this now with people who are young and dating, people who are younger and starting out. You know, any of us that know this now, man, we had to fight our way through the weeds to get to this. But you can have this because of technology. One of the good signs is you can hear this stuff now and it'll expedite your journey. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, he called me crying after his arranged marriage engagement. Wow. Yeah, listen, that's a whole nother topic. That is social approval, family approval. There are people completely trapped, trapped in their system of acceptance. And it's huge because it's not only their religion, it's their family, it's their community, it's their everything. And they will choose a life that they hate to gain the approval of those around them. Okay. I am starting out at 24. And your name, Granny? <laughs> I love it. Um, wasn't ready to get into a relationship as she recently came out of a 12-year relationship. I reassessed that I reassessed her that was happy to take things slowly. Okay. All right. What's going on? Okay. I'm going to sign off pretty soon unless any of you have a super chat question. I appreciate your letting me talk today. It's a lot of material. I really, I would ask you to check out the dating games guide, which is in the link below. You can always find it on my shop page. Um, that'll really help you out. That's a pretty cool little mechanism that they've got going on. If you don't know, sign up for a consultation. I still do one-on-ones. And I am now planning trips as I go abroad. I will be letting people know. Pretty sure I'm going to Monaco. <sighs> now, I'm not saying all of you live in the south of France, but if anybody lives in the south of France, you will be hearing more from me. I'm just firming up plans right now. And uh, let's see what else. Hmm. A book that I wrote. I self-published because I want to write it the way I wanted to, allowing magnificence. If you want to know how I got to my journey, because so many people want to know about me. They don't know about me, 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 me personally. I share a lot here about dating and relationships and about my life, but they don't know my story. So that is actually in there for the first time. I told things as well as I could in relationship to challenges. And the point is that challenges, I believe, Susan Thing, carve our soul's purpose. That's one of my quotes from Allowing Magnificence. So when you are facing challenges and you feel like a victim, I've been there. I've been there. Believe me. Everybody's turned against you. You're standing up for something you believe. You're different than the rest. You don't know how to integrate, but then you don't want to integrate into a world that you don't feel is right for you. And so you don't know where to go. We didn't have tools. We didn't have internet. We didn't have people who understood this. I had to fight my way through it. And in the beginning, you simply say no to what you don't like. But then you're in stasis. When you say no to what you don't like, it never occurred to me that I could have created. Creating out of nothing, creating out of something you've never seen is a huge bit of business. And I'm going to do a video on that specifically. If you didn't see a video this week on Tuesday, I got busy. I have my taxes here. Oh my God, me doing taxes. I don't use a computer. I do paper. Oh my God. Anyway, everyone, I will see you next week. Now I need you to tell me what you want to talk about. I took this topic from last week's recommendations on authenticity. Come to Stockholm someday. Okay. Anybody located in the south of France? Brian, love Australia. Been there a couple times. Let's see. Uh, okay, Granny Nanny. Okay. So I will keep you posted because the, my favorite way to visit a foreign country when I'm staying there for a couple of days, I'm going on another cruise, but when I stay there for a couple of days is to do a private session and I do it at a reduced rate for the one hour session. So it's my way to meet you where you live or within an hour or two of where you live and have a one-on-one -on -one consultation. I really, really enjoyed that. I loved meeting my fans and followers in Singapore. So we will see. Okay. Everybody 
If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Don't forget to go to susanwinter.net if you want a consultation. B, Gwyneth, thank you for today. Brian, thank you for always being here, all of you. I appreciate you. Onward and upward to authentic relationships that feel real and true for us. When you know, oh, Royce, thank you. Subscribe, thank you, Royce. So when you know what it isn't, it's clearer to know what it is. Okay, I hope this helps your dating life. Love you all. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, B. Bye, Gwyneth.